The human body is comprised of a series of complex systems. Just as the organs in an organ system work together to accomplish their tasks, so the different organ systems also cooperate to keep the body running. These systems work individually as well as interconnected to carry out certain functions in our body. Basically, the kidney, brain, lungs, and vessels in our body all influence the work of the heart and also blood pressure. Likewise, the hormonal system controls the cardiovascular system and alters blood pressure and heart rate as well. Similarly, the renin-angiotensin system or renin-angiotensin-aldosterone system or RAS is a hormone system that regulates blood pressure, fluid and electrolyte balance along with systemic vascular resistance. As the name suggests, the renin-angiotensin-aldosterone system is compromised of these three hormones, renin, angiotensin, and aldosterone. So, how does this system work to control blood pressure and other important functions in our body? In this video, we will learn the RAS system, how it works and its significance in clinical practice, so let's get started. When the blood pressure drops suddenly, the kidney senses that fall in pressure and activates the RAS system, but how? Within the afferent arterioles of the kidney, specialized cells called juxtaglomerular or JG cells contain prorenin. Prorenin, which is a protein that constitutes a precursor for renin, the hormone that activates the renin-angiotensin system, which serves to raise blood pressure. But this prorenin is still in an inactive form. When the blood pressure drops, the JG cells get activated, the prorenin cleavage occurs, and here comes the renin, the first and foremost player in the RAS system. Also, the JG cells get activated due to beta-activation, or activation by macula densa cells in response to a decreased sodium load in the distal convoluted tubule. Once the renin is secreted in the blood, it finds its target, angiotensinogen. Angiotensinogen, which is secreted by the liver and continuously circulates in the bloodstream, is caught up by renin. The renin then breaks down the angiotensinogen and forms the second player in action, angiotensin 1. But angiotensin 1 is physiologically inactive. Hence, to convert angiotensin 1 into 2, angiotensin-converting enzymes come into play. This, AC, or angiotensin-converting enzyme, is found primarily in the vascular endothelium of the lungs and kidneys. Once the conversion is completed, angiotensin 2 binds to angiotensin receptors, which have two types, 1 and 2, which are also called AT1 and AT2 receptors. The angiotensin binding to AT1 and AT2 receptors affects the kidney, heart, and brain along with the adrenal cortex and arterioles. The AT receptors are shown to cause vasodilation by nitric oxide generation. Angiotensin II affects the various organ systems in our body. Now, let's understand its effect on the kidney. The mechanism by which angiotensin helps increase blood pressure is sodium reabsorption. Angiotensin II increases sodium reabsorption via boosting sodium hydrogen ion exchange in the proximal convoluted tubule of the kidney. So, when the body has higher amounts of sodium, the blood becomes more osmolar, which causes fluid to move into the blood volume and extracellular space. As a result, the patient's arterial pressure rises. Next, the adrenal cortex. Angiotensin II specifically affects the zona glomerulosa in the adrenal cortex. Here, it stimulates aldosterone to be released. Here the third player of RAS system comes into play, the aldosterone. In contrast to angiotensin II, aldosterone is a steroid hormone. By attaching to nuclear receptors and changing gene transcription, it brings about change. Thus, the effects of aldosterone may take hours to days to begin, while the effects of angiotensin II are rapid. Sodium reabsorption and potassium excretion in the distal tubule and collecting duct of the nephron are impacted by aldosterone. This causes a significant rise in blood pressure. Next, we are looking at the effects of angiotensin II on systemic arterioles. Here, angiotensin II binds to G-protein coupled receptors on blood vessels, leading to a secondary messenger cascade that results in potent arteriolar vasoconstriction. This acts to increase total peripheral resistance, causing an increase in blood pressure. Next, we will have a look at how angiotensin affects the heart. 
Angiotensin 1 receptors are prominent in the heart and present a binding site for angiotensin. Angiotensin 2 binding to the angiotensin 1 receptors in heart can cause hypertrophy, arrhythmia, and failure of ventricular function, along with increased membrane permeability and epithelial cell death. Excessive angiotensin 2 can also cause significant inflammatory alterations like cytokine-induced organ damage. Finally, here's how angiotensin 2 acts on the brain. Angiotensin 2 acts at the hypothalamus to stimulate the sensation of thirst, resulting in an increase in fluid consumption. This helps to raise the circulating volume and in turn, blood pressure. It also increases the secretion of antidiuretic hormone from the posterior pituitary gland, resulting in the production of more concentrated urine to reduce the loss of fluid from urination. This allows the circulating volume to be better maintained until more fluids can be consumed. It also stimulates the sympathetic nervous system to increase the release of noradrenaline. This hormone is typically associated with the fight or flight response in stressful situations and has a variety of actions that are relevant to the RAS, like increase in cardiac output, vasoconstriction of arterioles and release of renin which all ultimately cause increased blood pressure. On a long-term basis, the renin-angiotensin-aldosterone system controls blood volume and arteriolar tone. The baroreceptor reflex normally controls tiny and quick changes, although the RAS can change blood volume over time. Despite playing a vital role, the RAS can occasionally activate improperly in a number of situations, which can subsequently result in the onset of hypertension. For instance, renal artery stenosis reduces the amount of blood that reaches one or both kidneys. Juxtaglomerular cells will, as a result, detect a drop in blood volume, activating the RAS. Due to inadequate renal perfusion, this may result in an improper rise of the circulating blood volume and arterial tone, which leads to abnormally high blood pressure. RAS is frequently manipulated to treat various heart conditions like hypertension, heart failure, diabetes mellitus, and acute myocardial infarction. In the next videos, we will learn about the antihypertensive class of drugs, including ACE inhibitors, ARBs, and renin inhibitors. Thank you for watching. Please subscribe and support us to learn more. Thank you.